morning everybody um, just wanted to touch base today and maybe do something that was exciting for you guys I got an order here from uh, labor 103 for an ace of spades hookah um, about to go out to the shop uh, even though it's a little chilly out there I'm gonna put this hookah together and show you guys step by step how I do it all right here we go so came out to the shop uh, try to find the best looking bottle that I have of these um, I just look for the one you know with the least amount of nicks and label defects um, this one's pretty good so this is the one uh, that we're gonna work on today so let's see what we can let's see what we can do with this all right now for the first step in creating a hookah out of the ace of spades bottle uh, we use <clears throat> This is a ring saw, okay. Um, the ring saw can be purchased online. Um, I think I paid somewhere around $700, $800 for mine. Um, it's normally used for uh, stained glass and uh, different fine, intricate glass working. Um, I find it a better cut on the bottles. Uh, now, if you did your own research, you probably found maybe three or four different options of cutting these bottles. Um, the best way I've found is, is to use this ring saw. You can use a regular tile saw if you'd like, uh, but that blade that you're going to get is a lot thicker. It's going to take a lot of off, um, and it travels at too high of a speed, uh, RPM, and it causes a lot of nicks. So, um, I'll show you the setup, um, after it's been put in, and then I'll show you the video on how to cut it. All right. Okay, now that we have the the bottle <clears throat> cut, um, we have the two pieces. And we had turned out we had a pretty decent cut. So the next step is we're going to take the base and we're going to use a diamond drill bit. Now, depending on what type of hookah stem you you buy there's going to be a different diameter that the uh, the valve body will have so you'll have to use a mic and measure your valve body of each of the hookah stems you use to put these together um, but that you'll get the hang of finding out what millimeter drill bit you would need to use um, so we're going to take this cupped drill bit and we're going to now take and form the correct inside diameter hole that we need for our hookah stem. All right, so the next step is I'm gonna chuck this bottle up into the vise and I already have the proper drill bit already chucked up and then we're gonna drill it. You wanna always use water when you're drilling glass um, you want to go very slow. You want to have a, a very, very fast RPM set, the highest RPM you can choose. Uh, but you want to apply almost no pressure when you're pushing down on the drill press. For my setup, I use a telescoping drill press um, and I use a milling vise. Um, it gives me all degrees of adjustment up, down, left, right, back, forward, so that whenever I'm putting these things in, I get the most accurate drill straight down into the bottle. Um, I couldn't imagine trying to use a regular drill press with no articulations and no milling vise. Your setup time wouldn't be worth you know, what you can make by selling these online. Let's get ready to go.
before I continue in the excitement of the video, I forgot the most important thing. Safety glasses. There you have it. Most of these hookahs are going to come with uh, a grommet that looks something like this. And now for this, if you look, see the ribs on this. That uh, ribbing allows for a much looser fit on the original hookah um, base. And when it goes in, these ribs push up and then fill that void. Now for this, there's not a there's not a large distance of one inside diameter. It it tapers outward. And that's why when I drill these holes, they're not as loose as the hole in a regular base. So to compensate for that, what I do is you would run into an issue putting these ribs down into that inside diameter and it could potentially cause the base to break and that's not what we want. So very simple fix. You just take your scissors and you cut all the way up to the top rib and then you take your scissors and you go around the upper portion of that top rim until you have completed the circle okay so then you'll have your ribs completely cut off and you'll have your grommet. You want to try to keep as much meat downward into the bottle as you can. Um, but you don't have to have a lot to make a good seal. So put our scissors away and I have a little bit of lubrication that I use here and I just put it on the grommet so I apply a little bit of lubrication you can use olive oil um, it's what most people use but um, it really doesn't matter as long as it's got some kind of stickiness to stay on there and, and it's gonna lubricate the inside of that so you can see now <clears throat> A lot of people mess up in regular hookahs, not just my hookahs, in the way that they assemble their hookahs. Some people make the mistake in putting the grommet on the, the valve body on the stem first and then trying to shut and shove it into the bottle. That's actually incorrect. <clears throat> if you put your, your grommet in first and then you apply some sort of dish soap or olive oil, whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter, and then you take your valve body put it in it goes in nice and smooth so our next step is we're going to assemble the stem um, I'm gonna have this piece together in video because uh, I, I don't know if I'm gonna run into any issues sometimes I do uh, so you want to take your valve body and this one's completely disassembled valve body okay you want to take uh, your start your top portion of your stem um, this is where your jewelry is gonna go that's what they call the accessories that make the top of the stem look pretty <clears throat> So there's normally a threaded portion here. Now some of these are different, but the ones that I use usually have a threaded portion uh, along this portion. You may run into some that actually have the threaded portion down here. Okay, and that's, that's no problem either. Um, now when I assemble these, uh, normally when they're assembled from China, they don't have any type of uh, adhesive holding them together. And that just causes a, a bad pull on the hookah because there's actual, um, no suction, like a full, you know, uh, suction on it because there's all those extra little air holes. Now for me, I used um, any type of super glue is fine. Um, I'm not sponsored by Gorilla Glue, but this is the type of glue that I like to use. I like to use a gel super glue so that it doesn't run everywhere and it doesn't get all over your hands. Um, and I don't use very much. Uh, I only dab normal, normally one drop and that's just to hold it in place. Um, I used to put two-part epoxy to hold these these pieces together and what 
I would find is I may have made a mistake and <laughs> two part epoxy is a little bit permanent. So the super glue, fortunately for me, if I do make that mistake, I can just take I can crack that super glue apart. It's really just to hold it in place. Is I usually take the uh, the union that goes into each one of these holes, and the union is is literally just um, a double male fitting. Now on one side you'll see it's a flush cut. Okay. And the other side, you'll see it is, it is tapered. You can see it from the reflection. It's a tapered cut. The tapered cut is actually where the ball bearing goes for the bypass valve. Um, so that whenever you're drawing on the hookah, it, that ball bearing gets sucked in tightly and um, allows you to have a good pull. Then if you start to conversate and the hookah fills up with... Um, smoke hot smoke and you start to pull on it and it burns your throat you can just blow instead of pull and it will clear the smoke the smoke out of the bottle so this is the the bung hose bung it also has a threaded very hard to see on camera but it has a threaded fitting and that and that's the female version of the male fitting here so you would just thread this on like so. Now, depending on how snug this gets, is whether I'm going to take it back off and put super glue on it. But this one's pretty snug. Um, this is this is very thin metal on most of these bodies, and sometimes someone can over push on a hose for uh, over time, and it can strip the threads that we just used. If that ever happens, all you need to do is take it off and then apply some type of super glue and then thread it back on, let it dry, you're good to go. All right. Okay, so now in this next portion, we are going to assemble the jewelry or the flourish. And in this case, this is an Ace of Spades bottle. So part of the flourish or the jewelry is the actual Ace of Spades bottle. Okay, so and that, just so you kind of get a, an idea, is what makes the whole bottle look like it's it's still a Ace of Spades bottle, but you have the integrated hookah. You know, if this was just someone's um, cheap version that you'll see online that I mentioned before, this wouldn't be this wouldn't be detached all like this. You would just have a hole drilled in here, and you would have a uh, you would just have this set down on top of there like that. So back to assembling the flourish. So you want to take what you have currently put together and you want to line up. I normally line up uh, the hose to the right because I'm a righty and I usually line up the symbol of whatever bottle I'm making to that particular center. Um, you can have your own preference if you want to do it the other way around and be a lefty, but it's just the way I choose. So after you've got that lined up the way you want it, um, sometimes depending on how tall this is, you might come right up to these threads um, and then you would just put the extra pieces you're gonna see in a moment on. In this particular bottle, in this particular uh, piece set I have purchased uh, from my accessory store, it is a little longer. So I, I actually enjoy that because I get to put um, a little bit of artistic creativity um, which is the jewelry and the flourish. So in this case, uh, today, I'm going to use a decorative bead. And it is a smoked black bead. And the other piece is a spacer. It is a chrome spacer. All right, now, pretty simple. I'm going to put the bead into the top as if it was a cork. It's rounded, so it's going to center the actual top part. This portion is my spacer. Now my spacer, I'm just going to insert curve right over the bead. Um, in doing that, it allows me to take up that extra space. And you can see that now all I have is about 
three threads of this tin. Okay. Now I'm going to take my tray and I'm going to put that right on where those three threads are. And if you can see, there's now still just over two and a half threads showing. Okay. Now, same concept as putting the stem into the valve body. I use the super glue up here. I don't put it very much, just a drop. And it's mainly because when people twist their bowls on, you can loosen um, this piece, which this piece is just a tapered metal piece that this rubber grommet for the bowl goes on, and it has threads. But when you tighten down on a hookah, you may know this, um, you can actually unscrew this and this whole thing comes apart. So I throw the glue in mainly to just not have to fight putting things back together or having things fall apart. The last thing you want to do is when you get a new product is have it come apart on you and then you have to figure out how to put it back together. First thing people think is it's broken. So that glue just reassures me. I'll pull this off so you can see. So that's just the taper part for the bowl. Okay, now this is going to be subjective of what type of pieces you have. <clears throat> on these uh, accessory pieces that I buy, they have a, a two-part connection. Okay, so if you if you look in there, this particular por portion is pressed on with these little dimple marks you can see. So I'm gonna I want to use this threaded piece here. So I take an old threaded stem. I've been using this one on for quite a few years now and I thread it on like that and I want to keep the piece that I just thread on so I bend it back and forth and then that just separates those two pieces okay so now that I have this this part I was trying to get left over um, I'm gonna measure out of this stainless steel tubing this is 3 8 inch tubing and you can buy this online um, I think you can even buy it at some uh, specialty hardware stores I haven't found it at Lowe's or Home Depot um, so don't try your luck there but <clears throat> so what we're first going to do is we're going to figure out where we need to cut this long rod so First thing you want to think about is where, if I'm going to screw that piece there, inside of there, is it going to sit? So in that case, right around up here is where that threaded end is sticking down in to the valve body. So right about halfway of the valve body is where the it starts to be threaded connection where we're going to thread that thread to it. So you want to take that in consideration and you want to put the hose or stem where you want it to end up in the bottle, which is right at the bottom label. And then you want to point to where it stops, which is halfway of the valve body and point over to your stem and this is where we're going to want to cut it so I'm just going to hold it there I go in my tool drawer here and I'm going to take this rigid pipe cutter specifically made for stainless steel if you go to Home Depot and you buy a pipe cutter it's made for copper and copper is not as hard as steel and you will just break it so make sure you buy one for stainless steel. So the way this works is pretty simple. You make a gap by turning that screwed handle and I'm going to lay it right where I wanted it and I'm going to line it up such. You want to snug it just finger tight and you want to start to go around the pipe and you tighten it more. Go around the pipe and you tighten just a bit more, go around the pipe, and 
tighten it a bit more, go around, tighten it, go around. And you'll start to feel it kind of free up a bit. And it's going to get right on you. Perfect. Perfect cut. It even rounds it by the nature of the way it's being cut. Okay, for this next step, we're going to take the two things that we we have now. You should remember we have this connection. Okay? And then we have our stem. All right. Now our goal in this step is to be able to get this to go into this. Now, the problem lies in the fact that this is 3 eighths of an inch, and this is just a little bit smaller than 3 eighths of an inch. So, we're going to take a 3 eighths inch drill bit, and we're going to drill the inside of this out about a quarter of an inch. Now, to help drill this, what I do is I take that old stem, and I thread it on, similar to what I did before when I pulled the old bottom portion of the stem off. Now this is going to allow me to take this portion of this old stem and chuck it up <coughs> into the vise so that whenever I drill this, I'm not going to have to fight it being straight. Okay, so you can use any drill. I'm not sponsored by DeWalt, but I do like their tools. So you just want to line this up. And when drilling metal, go as slow as you can. Most of these pieces are aluminum, so they don't take a lot of pressure. You just want to drill out about a quarter of an inch. You don't want to drill all the way through it. So that's about that's about where I want it. Okay, so for the next step, if you have um, a hard surface, anvil, uh, brick, whatever, and I just lay that newly drilled, you see the taper, take that newly drilled portion and I take my stem that I plan on using and um, you can use any type of rubber mallet, um, you can use a neutral hammer, it doesn't really matter, but you just don't want to damage the stainless steel, so whatever you're hitting it with needs to be softer than the thing you're hitting. You kind of just want to check it by turning it to see if it's straight because you can hammer it crooked and it just doesn't look good uh, it's still going to function fine so now that is now hammered to the threads all the way up to the where that taper stopped now this is still not uh, this is an airtight seal but it's still not going to be tight enough to where when you start to screw it in that this won't rotate inside of here. So, I'll show you the next tool that we need. Okay, so the next tool that you're gonna wanna use, and these come in all different shapes and sizes. This is a mandrel. It can be used for tapering anything. A lot of people use these in jewelry making for rings. You can straighten a bent ring, or you can size a ring up depending on the material. <clears throat> what I'm going to use it for today is when I put this in here, this taper, as I hammer on this, is going to push that 3 8 of an inch pipe outward into this particular fitting. That's going to create that seal and it's also going to create that mechanical attachment that you need for when you screw this on and off of the valve body. Now, 
I'm just hitting it until it doesn't want me to hit it anymore. You'll notice that it makes a higher ting noise. That higher ting noise means it's not moving. Okay, now for this portion, um, this is just a little bit of ingenuity. Uh, what I've done, because this particular mandrel is now going to be stuck on here to the point you, you can't pull it off by hand. There's just no way. Um, so what I've done, and I use, is this divot in my bench and if I put this in here it's a little bit smaller than the connection fitting so I'll show you the setup once I have it put together and then I'll I'll show you what I need to do okay so now what we do is we take the mandrel with the connection of the stem and put a vice grip on it. <clears throat> we set this into place with this vice grip hanging down. And we take our same hammer we've been using and we hold it very tight up here and we're going to strike this very quickly and it should separate the two pieces. Just like that. So now we have the finished stem with the attachment which should as you saw before be much longer than the original stem so it should stick down to where that bottom label is that's our goal so the way that I have come up with this to go together is of course this is threaded as mentioned it's going to go into this hole Okay, and you're going to just go to the center and you're going to fill the threading of that original stem that we come came through the top of the valve body. And a lot of people over tighten these. Do not over tighten these. Just tighten them very loosely until they, they're snug. You should only have to apply a little bit of torque to get it undone. So remember that. Just tighten it until it snugs. Right when it, right when it snugs, stop turning it. Um, so now we have our entire stem and our base completed. We would assemble it by putting our grommet in. We would place our stem in place. And now you have a completed hookah. The, normally the rubber grommets are already in the bones when I send these out. And then you take your hose. And before I send these off, I always pressure test them to make sure I haven't messed up or missed something because I am only human. I am not in China and I am not mass producing things with machines. So, we're going to take our bowl. You should be familiar with one of these if you've used a hookah. And we're just placing it on top loosely. You don't have to push down as hard as people do. And of course, each one of these comes with tongs. Um, so what I'm going to do for my pressure test is fairly simple. I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to cover the top of this bowl. By doing that, it is going to replicate somewhat of the suction from the tobacco covering the holes. Then I'm going to first blow into it. That valve noise is the ball bearing being pushed out and the air coming out of those three holes I showed you. And then I'm going to cause suction. Should be a slight baby hiss. Okay, that that is a good seal. All right, um, this hookah is ready to go. It has been tested. I'm gonna package it up and send it to the customer. Thanks for your time.